Thank you for joining us today. And in our broadcast, we're going to focus upon uh, a very uh, hot potato question that's being asked, especially this time of the year. And we're going to be answering the question sent in by many viewers, was Jesus a Palestinian? And uh, it's a good question. It's an important question. I thought we'd go into uh, Luke chapter 2. This question oftentimes uh, rises to popularity, especially around the Christmas season. And I want to go into Luke chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 1. And we're going to read down through verse 20. Uh, This passage is not only uh, a passage that is read many times and in many Christian homes during the Christmas season, but it deals with the birthplace of Christ and history that is important to our subject today was Jesus a Palestinian. Let's read. At that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Now there's a piece of history in the Bible that I want you to run your highlighter through. And obviously this is a significant piece in answering the question, was Jesus a Palestinian? The Savior, verse 11, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others. The armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Uh, I love that um, passage. It's also found in Matthew's gospel. But uh, as always, let's take a moment to pray together and give me an opportunity to 
pray for you and with you. Heavenly Father, once again, uh, we always pause when we open the sacred scriptures and read because it's not just a secular book. It is a sacred book. It is the word of the living God, holy and high and powerful. And contained in its pages is more than poetry and literature and history and prophecy. Contained in its pages is power and healing and miracles and salvation. And I pray that for every single listener. I pray your blessing upon them and for those who perhaps have never personally and publicly repented of sin and received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, I pray that today would be the day. May they feel the love of God. May they feel the conviction of sin. And may they feel the tugging of the Holy Spirit upon their hearts. And while there is yet time, May they come to know you as their heavenly Father and Christ as their Savior and the Holy Spirit as their indwelling presence and power. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Now guide us into all truth and let the word of God hold preeminence in everything that is said and done. And we'll be careful to give you praise for it is in the name of Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Well, it just seems like every year around the Christmas season, uh, sad but a part of our current modern society, that around Christmas you can almost be assured that the anti-Israel and anti-Semitics and liberal academia Uh, will fill online stages with the theory and the argument and the debate concerning the statement that Jesus was a Palestinian. And uh, I think perhaps this year, because of the 2023 war that has been recently declared by Benjamin Netanyahu, in Israel, and because of the conflict, the fighting, the gory details that follow every war, uh, and, and sadly, there are innocent people on both sides of the equation. I don't want you as a student of mine to feel that I have no place in my heart for Palestinians, because that's not true. Everybody is somebody to God. But we must dedicate ourselves to truth, regardless of how that truth aligns with our personal feelings, emotions, or biases. And many of these talking points concerning Palestine and Jesus being a Palestinian and and so forth, and uh, those that are marching on behalf of Palestine and and rioting for those that uh, they believe are are a part of genocide, and all of the things that seem to be across the headlines of every major news outlet, they are obviously points that stir emotions, and it's easy to gather crowds and to get people involved in a, a new cause. But you must never judge any truth by popularity or by who is involved with it or how it pulls on emotional strings, you, listen, you must always be willing to receive and to understand truth. Uh, This year with the 2023 war in Israel in play, uh, that debate uh, about Jesus being a Palestinian is louder than it has ever been. And I must also add to that that the anti-Israel, pro-Palestine liberal activists uh, seem to be multiplying like rats in a a rice factory. And we've all seen uh, in social media and in memes and on the news 
Uh, almost all of our major liberal colleges and universities are um, sadly uh, pouring gasoline on a fire of anti-Semitism, and a lot of it is just quite frankly, historically and factually inaccurate, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But to be honest with you, what is genuinely troubling uh, is the bizarre ignorance of what should be basic historical facts and the twisting of these facts and truths uh, that these demonstrations and activists are screaming and shouting across our nation. But what grieves my heart more than any of that, and, and listen carefully, what grieves my heart more than any of the anti-Israel, anti-Jew, activists, protests, riots, etc., is that many growing numbers of Christians and Christian leaders and Christians who have social media influence have fallen on the wrong side of this argument, claiming to be Christians. It is amazing to me their equal ignorance of not only basic historical facts, but basic biblical information that seemingly has been grasped by many Christians who are pro-Palestine and anti-Israel, and whether they feel that this gives them a larger platform or it makes them appear to be uh, more open to discussion or more relevant. It's beyond my intellect to uh, judge their reasons. But I will tell you this. I will give you historic, biblical facts in answering this question, was Jesus Palestinian? If you're taking notes, number one, where did the Jesus was a Palestinian theory originate? Let me give you a moment to write that down. Uh, I'm meeting people everywhere I go now who come up to me and, and mention that they follow us on YouTube, and uh, some of them ask me to slow down, and some of them uh, tell me they're taking copious notes. And uh, So this is very important, and this is not going to be a long study together because the history uh, does not need to be drawn out. But number one, it's important that you understand this. Number one, where did the Jesus was a Palestinian theory originate? Let's talk about that. Most originate uh, the theory that Jesus was a Palestinian with the former Palestinian Authority chairman. Uh, most of you will uh, remember and recognize his name, Yasser Arafat. And he was not only the Palestinian Authority chairman, uh, he was and I know this is going to trigger people, but he was a terrorist, uh, and he backed terrorism. And he was the one who began to uh, really propel this statement that Jesus was Palestinian as a political talking point back in 2006. So if in your discussions or in your debates or perhaps even in Bible studies or in your churches, if you run into Christians who have fallen prey to the perverted facts and history and twisting of the Bible and uh, they're trying to convince you that Jesus was Palestinian and uh, the question is asked, well, where did this all begin? You can just simply say, Yasser Arafat, who was the former Palestinian Authority chairman in 2006, is most often credited with creating what he obviously used for a political talking point and a fundraising point. Jesus was Palestinian. Now, I will answer in just a moment why he did it, why those I believe in modern times continue to use it, I will be answering why I feel that they're doing so. But those who declare that Jesus was a Palestinian add to this a political talking point that takes it one bizarre step further. 
they not only will argue that Jesus was a Palestinian, they will go on to argue that Jesus was the first Palestinian martyr. And uh, some of you that uh, follow these types of subjects and are interested in Israel and Jewish history, I'm sure you're aware of that, but many will not. Uh, This year, uh, here in the United States of America, uh, we have, and I don't mean this to be mean-spirited, this is just factual information, but those of us that live in America, we are well aware of a group of female political voices and representatives who are anti-Semitic to say the least. Uh, Some have gone as far as to say that they believe that the Jewish people should be wiped off of the face of the earth. And they are elected American politicians. And those of us that live in America, I'll not give their names. I don't even want to give credence to uh, their hatred and their perversion of history and facts, not to mention their anti-Jesus, anti-Bible, anti-Christian views. But there are several female voices in the political circle that even as I speak are all over the news, all over Twitter, all over social media, continuing to pound the drum that Jesus was a Palestinian. And one went as far as to say that if Jesus were alive today, he would be fighting with Hamas. And uh, I'll, I'll not go over the crazy things that are said, but I want you to know it's not just a small little unknown faction that believe this. It's major political voices, major social influencers, sadly, some notable Christian leaders, and voices that continue to pound the drum on the fact that Jesus was a Palestinian. Uh, Many of you would be familiar with Al Jazeera, uh, The Independent, and uh, those of us that live here in the United States of America, The New York Times, all of which in recent days have published articles defending the view that Jesus was a Palestinian. And when you have major news outlets uh, around the world who give credence to this declaration that Jesus was Palestinian, the average person doesn't do their homework on it. They just assume that because Al Jazeera said it or the Independent said it or major political voices are saying it and the New York Times and other liberal publications are all saying that Jesus was Palestinian, that there must be some truth to it. The New York Times published an article not long ago on the deep importance of the skin color of Jesus stating, quote, Jesus, born in Bethlehem, was most likely a Palestinian man with dark skin. Uh, End of quote. Uh, That brings me to our second and last question in answering today in our study and in this video, Was Jesus a Palestinian? If you're taking notes, our last point, number two, what is the goal of the argument that Jesus was a Palestinian? Uh, Many of you, perhaps like myself, uh, I'm kind of an analysis, synthesis type of thinker. I I don't want to just know what people believe. I want to know why. Uh, Even as a child growing up, my mom and dad in ministry, my my dad has been with the Lord for almost nine years. Many of you know that my 91-year-old mother passed away uh, days ago. And because of the gospel, I'll meet them again. But growing up in a Christian home and my father being a pastor and being around the Bible and ministry my entire life uh, did not keep me from getting to a point early in life, 10, 11, 12, uh, in those years where my mind not only wanted to know what my parents believed and were teaching me, I wanted to know for myself and I wanted to know why. 
I still have a mind <clears throat> that functions like that. And I also want to give people, regardless of what people's views are, I, I do my best to be gracious to people, and uh, I believe in free speech. Uh, if, if you disagree, that doesn't mean that I hate you or I'm your enemy or vice versa. It shouldn't. And especially in the community of those who believe the Bible and consider themselves Christians, uh, the Bible tells us we should be ready to defend what we believe and to give an answer. So let me conclude this video by answering the question, what is the goal of the argument that Jesus was a Palestinian? Uh, I'm going to state the obvious, because it is historically and biblically inaccurate, it was, as I've already defined for you, a political talking point that was created by Yasser Arafat in 2006 and in 2023. It still is the same. It is a political talking point that is not factually accurate. And it is an anti-Israel political talking point. Uh, by trying to make people believe that Jesus was a Palestinian, those who hate Israel and the Jews further their goal to erase Jewish ties to the land of Israel and to disregard the divine statehood of Israel that was promised by God over 3,000 years ago. God promised Israel a land, a statehood, a prophetic promise given by God to Abraham that followed down through the generations, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David, on through Jesus. And even to this day, that promise is in the Bible, and it is a biblical and historic fact that dates back 3,000 years ago. There was no Palestine 3,000 years ago. As you're about to learn, there was no Palestine when Jesus walked the face of this earth. It is also a blatant attack when people say that Jesus was Palestinian. It's not only a political talking point, by those who are anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, anti-Jew, anyone who declares that Jesus was a Palestinian is also anti-Bible because the Bible presents Jesus not only as the only begotten Son of God, <clears throat> but the Bible presents Jesus as the promised Jewish Messiah. And he is also presented in the Bible and in Bible prophecy as the eternal Jewish king of Israel who will sit on a throne forever established in Jerusalem. Those of you who follow our teaching, and as you well know, we spend a tremendous amount of time on our channel dealing with Bible prophecy, end time events, final prophetic application, and so on. Uh, we have a lot of teaching on that. I hope you'll avail yourself to it. But Jesus will defeat the one world political system. Revelation 13 tells us that there is soon to come on this earth a one world leader, a one world monetary system, a one world government, a one world religion, and a one world military force that will carry out the drastic and extreme mandates of this one world leader. And so the political bullet point of Jesus being Palestinian actually fits into that final political agenda of five points that I just gave to you. And if you have not already listened to it, one of the most important videos on our YouTube channel and on our podcast channel. Please listen to it until you know it in your heart and know it in your mind and can teach it to others. 
It's entitled, The Five Political Agendas of Bible Prophecy. And the United Nations, as I speak, and not recently, it's been on their website for multiple years. It's called the 2030 Agenda. And the 2030 Agenda of the United Nations is the fulfillment of exactly what John wrote in Revelation 13 about those five political agendas that are already on this earth and are aggressively being pushed upon not only our nation, but around the world. Again, what are those five political agendas? A one world leader, the Bible calls him the Antichrist. A one world monetary system, the Bible speaks of the mark of the beast that will be placed on the back of the hand or upon the forehead and without it, no one will be able to buy or to sell. A one world religion and a one world military power that is going to enforce it. Listen to that video when you get a chance because the declaration of Jesus being Palestinian fits into that false political global agenda that is trying to erase Israel, trying to erase Jews, trying to erase and demean Jewish history and is anti-Bible and anti-history. The message of Jesus being Palestinian is just propaganda. And I know some of you won't like that, but that is just factually what it is and historically as well. Uh, the chief Palestinian negotiator, Saeed Arakat, tweeted a video days ago entitled, Merry Palestinian Christmas. That was his tweet. Merry Palestinian Christmas with a Palestinian saying that, and I quote from that video, Jesus was one of us. He's Palestinian. Jesus was one of us. He didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes. He wasn't from Kentucky. He looked like DJ Khaled, minus 200 pounds. Mary too was a Palestinian. Mary's grandmother, a Palestinian. John the Baptist, St. George, the Apostles, all Palestinians, end of quote. Now, every single word of that quote is historically a lie and is inaccurate and is nothing more than a perverted political piece of propaganda. And it's everywhere. Just because somebody says something and is emotional or passionate, including myself, it doesn't mean that it's accurate just because somebody's passionate or emotional or well-known. All truth must be built upon the foundation of God's eternal word. But even if you're listening and you're not a Christian, you don't need the Bible to prove that Jesus was not a Palestinian. A simple reading of history substantiates the absolute fact that Jesus was not a Palestinian. The simple truth is that activists are taking a relatively new name for this region, and I emphasize that. It's a relatively new name, Palestine, for that region and placing it upon the ancient history of what we know to be true. Archaeology, genealogy, and history all prove conclusively that Jesus was born before there ever was a Palestine. Let me say that again because that's incredibly important. And again, not my opinion, not my view, do your own homework on this from a reputable historian, not someone with a political bias, but you will find that archaeology, genealogy, and history all prove that Jesus was born before there ever was a land called Palestine. When we go back to the birth of Jesus, 
it's essential that you understand the facts. In 132 CE, the current state of Israel was renamed Palestinia by the Romans long after Christ had been born and long after his death. That land was never called Palestine in the times of Christ, in the times of Mary his mother, in the times of his family, in the times of the apostles. It was first named Palestinia by the Romans. They did this to punish the Jews for the largest revolt against Rome by stripping them of their name in connection to Jerusalem and Judea, and they did it as a, as a political spitting in their face, as the highest of insult, because by calling it Palestinia, they were naming it after the Philistines, who were the Jews' greatest enemies of that time that had conquered them. The use of even the earliest variants of Palestine began over 100 years after the birth of Christ. Now I'm going to pause and I'm going to say that again. And it's a gold nugget in this study that I think you should write down and have in your notes. Because if you are ever confronted on this question, this one sentence is impossible to get by by any intelligent, reasonable mind who's willing to accept the chronology of history. Let me say it again. The use of even the earliest variants of Palestine began over 100 years after the birth of Jesus Christ. So important, I'm going to say it again, because I just know that many of our faithful students are writing it down word for word, and I commend you if you're doing so. One more time, the use of even the variants of Palestine began over 100 years after the birth of Christ. How could Jesus be a Palestinian when there was no Palestine in his entire life. The term Palestine was unofficially used to describe land south of Syria uh, by the Ottoman Empire in the 1500s and was not even popular in the region and used by the people of that time. As a matter of fact, it was only after, listen carefully again for facts, and history that's provable and authenticated, it was only after World War I that another occupying force, the British Empire, uh, declared modern-day Israel and spoke of uh, a landmass that was divided called Jordan and also Palestine. So basically, when it comes to a notable recognition of the term Palestine, we're, we're coming into World War I, and Jesus obviously predated World War I. Just like the Romans, who were anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, anti-Jew, anti-Christ, the same spirit that caused the Romans to have hatred in their heart for the prophetic promises of God, the statehood of Israel, the promised Messiah, the Savior of the world. It is the same spirit today that tells us Jesus was a Palestinian. If you are, listen, if you are a believer, if you are a Bible-believing follower of Christ, to declare that Jesus was a Palestinian is not only an outright lie, it is an outright curse against God, against the statehood of Israel, against the name and the glory of Jesus Christ, against every Jew that walks the face of this earth. It is a dangerous thing to raise your voice 
against the promises of God and the history established not only by the Bible, but by genealogy, archaeology, and multiple records. Jesus was not Palestinian. He was the only begotten Son of God, the Savior of the world, a Jew by birth, a soon coming king who will reign forever and forever, his throne established in Israel, specifically in Jerusalem. And from Jerusalem, he will reign forever and forever. Be careful when you speak against the Jews. The Bible said, I'll bless those that bless the Jews and I'll curse those that curse the Jews. Many of you perhaps saw it on the news just a couple of days ago, an anti-Semitic world leader stood at an international platform and spoke of his hatred of the Jews and stated, quote, Allah's wrath will wipe all of the Jews off of the face of the earth as he shouted this hatred against Jews and pounded the podium. He dropped to the floor with a heart attack. And I'm not sure if he's living as I speak. It just hit the news. Be careful of the anti-Semitism that rages in our modern world. It is a part of the spirit of the Antichrist system that is alive and well on our planet. Can I conclude by asking you a question? Are you ready to meet Jesus? He's the soon coming king. And he will return. The Bible says in Matthew 24 and verse 44, Be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. If he came today, would you be ready? Has there been a time in your life when you have personally and publicly repented of your sins and trusted in Christ and in the cross and in the blood that he shed for sinners like me and you? And by His grace, salvation is a gift. You don't earn it by your works. You can't buy it. We don't merit it or deserve it. By His great grace, it is offered freely. And the Bible says in Acts 4, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Would you pray with me today, if you're uncertain, but down deep in your heart, you want to live every day ready to meet the Lord. We are living in the final moments of human history and Bible prophecy. And the Bible said, be ye also ready. And some of you are not ready. If you'd like to pray with me, if you'd like to have peace with God, if you'd like to know that you are ready, wherever you might be, I'm not only going to ask you to pray with me, but if you're sincere, when you're done, will you go to lostlamb.org and just email me and let me know that you prayed because we care about you here at Lost Lamb Association and we'll follow up. No cost. We're not asking for anything. We genuinely are doing our best to reach unreached people while there is yet time. Come to Christ today. Pray this with me out loud wherever you might be. Just say, Heavenly Father, Today as I was listening to the Bible, you were speaking to me. And down deep in my heart, I want to be a real Christian. I confess my sin and I humble my heart and I repent. In childlike faith, I turn my back on sin and I turn my heart to Jesus. I trust in your great grace. I receive salvation today as the gift of God. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and give me the power to be what you want me to be. Today in Jesus' name, I'm saved, I'm delivered, I'm healed, I'm blessed, and I'll never be the same because of your compassion and your great love. 
thank you for saving me. Amen.